Hey everybody, it's Dr. J, and yes, today we are talking about equilibrium constant. Let's talk about some chemistry. The law of mass of action, okay? This is the first thing we have to talk about before we get into the equilibrium constant, all right? So, law of mass action, this is basically going to show us a relationship, everybody. It's basically going to show us a relationship. So, it's going to show us a relationship between our chemical equation and the concentrations of our products and reactants, all right? That's basically what law of mass action is, just showing this relationship between the two. Now, um, what we need to realize is that every reaction is going to be unique, all right? So since every reaction is unique, basically, right, it's going to have its own type of constant associated with it, okay? So this constant is what we call the equilibrium constant, all right? So K. All right, you see K, uh, we're talking about equilibrium constant. So equilibrium constant is going to tell us where our equilibrium position is. Okay, so basically what that means is that it's going to tell me the direction in which our reaction is going, right? If, if we're going this way or if we're going that way, okay, it's going to tell me which way I'm going. As well as the equilibrium, the equilibrium constant it's going to help me calculate the concentrations of my products and reactants when it's at equilibrium, okay? When it's at equilibrium. If it's not at equilibrium, well, the equilibrium constant cannot help me, okay? So you have to be at equilibrium in order, right, for me to calculate my concentrations. And that's what the great thing about equilibrium constant is. So let's look at an example, right? Let's look at this. So I got, uh, you know, I got my concept over here. And, and then I'm going to show you guys the example over here. So concept-wise, right, we got our reactants making our products. So A, B, my reactants, C, D is my products. So when it comes to, right, forming, all right, when it comes to forming our K, we're going to use this right here, all right? So if I want to find my equilibrium constant, I'm going to set it up in this manner to where my products are going to be over my reactants. Okay. So I'm going to take my C and D and put it over my A and B. So now, right, I got my products over reactants. And then guess what I have to do? I must raise that to that given coefficient. So in this case, in my products, my coefficient for C is Y. So I'm going to raise my C to that Y. Coefficient for D is Z. I'm going to raise that to Z, right? We got A raised to W, B raised to X, right? Coefficients. So coefficients are being raised here. My actual reactant is in, right, my concentration right here, okay? So let's look over here to example. All right. Sometimes you see so many letters, it just gets confusing. Let's just do an example. N2 plus 3H2 gives me 2NH3. How am I going to set this up for my equilibrium constant? Well, I'm going to have to use the mass, mass action here, right? So it's going to show me that relationship between my chemical equation and a concentration of my reactants and products. So I'm going to do NH3. Bam. That's a product over our reactants, BAM, N2, BAM, H2. We got that set up. Now, what about our coefficients? As shown over here, right, we're going to raise that to the coefficient. So NH3 has 2 as a coefficient. So this is NH3, 2. We can tell our reactants N2. It's implied 1 here, right? So we're going to leave that as a 1. And then H2 has a coefficient of 3. So we need to raise that to 3. And that's it. So write the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So y'all know the drill. Um, feel free to pause me right after it. But give this a shot, man. Give this a shot. You got N2O4 making 2NO2 there. What is the equilibrium constant for this reaction? Feel free to pause me. You know what to do. All 
And let's go. All right, so the equilibrium concept for this reaction. Remember, this is a product of a reactants. Pay, make sure that you pay attention to the coefficients. This is two, this is a one. So my equilibrium constant should look like this. K E Q, all right, so this is letting me know this is equilibrium constant is equal to NO2 products raised to two coefficient over my reactants, N2O4. And because, right, the coefficient is a one, it's implied one here as well. So this is the equilibrium constant for the reaction. Let me know in the comments if you are able to do that, all right, if you, or if you got any questions, all right? Let's move on. So let's talk about equilibrium constant and let's, let's talk about the equilibrium constant and how we can relate that to a chemical equation. So let's talk about the very first relationship here. When the reaction is written backwards, okay, so when our reaction is written backwards, the equilibrium constant is inverted. So basically, right, we got our four reaction products of reactants. But if it's backwards, that means that our reactants are going to be over, over our products. So anytime that's the case, well, right, that's the same thing as, as basically, right, having our equilibrium constant be averted. So basically, it's one over our forward right, okay? So that's that first relationship there between our chemical equation and our equilibrium constant, right? If you're going backwards, you could just do one over K. What about two? The second one. So when you add equations to get a new equation, the equilibrium constant of the new equation is the product of the equilibrium constants of the old equations. Okay, so basically, we're going to have our, you know, B over A, C over B, right? So when you add equations to get a new equation, for instance, this is our new equation, C over A, the equilibrium constant of the new equation is the product the product of the equilibrium constants of the old equation. So if I multiply my old equations here, K1 and K2, guess what's going to happen? Cancel out, and guess what do we see here? The equilibrium constant of the new equation is the product of the equilibrium constants of the old equation. So basically, there are products of the old equation here. All right, C over A, new equilibrium constant, right? So if I multiply this K1 and K2, that's going to give me my new K right there, right? In K1, K2, as we saw here. Last relationship. When the coefficients of an equation are multiplied by a factor, the equilibrium constant is raised to that factor. So let's say we got our 2a to b gives me 2c, right? So when the coefficients of an equation are multiplied by a factor, the equilibrium constant is raised to that factor, right? So we still got products of reactants c over ab, right? But we're raising them when the coefficients of an equation are multiplied by a factor, right, in this case, two is a factor here, the equilibrium constant is raised to that factor. We're raising them by two, all right? So basically, we can have this right here. Whatever the coefficient is, we got to raise it to that factor. If this is a two, if it's a three, a four, a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, we're going to have to raise it to that factor. And these are the relationships between equilibrium constants and chemical equations. So equilibrium constants, that be the K, right, is telling us where the equilibrium position is. We understand this, right? Everybody shake your head if you're with me. Okay, so let's talk about, right, if 
if we have numbers associated with that K, which we're going to see in a bit here. So basically, right, those numbers for your equilibrium constant is actually going to tell you what direction we're actually heading towards, okay? And it's actually going to tell me as well how far it will go before we actually reach equilibrium. So let's look over here. Let's look at this first one here. All right, so if our equilibrium constant is greater than 1, greater than 1, if it's bigger than 1, this is going to let me know, right, that my reaction will go mainly towards the products. So we're going forward, right? We're going forward. We're going, in, we're going towards the right, right? We're going towards the right. So basically, big number for K, big K, we're going towards the products. Now, if we have a small number for our K, right? So if our number is smaller than one, okay? That's going to let me know that my re reaction is mainly going towards the reactants. It's going to the left. To the left, to the left. Everybody know? All right. The reaction is going mainly towards the reactants. Okay, so it's a small K. Small K, reactants, big K, products. Now, what happens if our K is equal to our round one? Well, that basically means that our reaction is going to produce roughly equal amounts of products and reactants, okay? So, for instance, let's say I got hydrogen and bromine forming this HBr acid, right? Here's a little example over here, but our equilibrium constant is set up to our products over reactants. That's not going to change. But when we actually do this, right, so if we have our concentration for all of these particular reactants and products, right, uh, we put them in, we solve for K, right, doing our standard math, and we're going to see if K is a large number. Well, this is going to let me know, right, that, well, big K, bigger than one, that means that we're going towards our products here. So we're mainly producing products, basically. But let's look on the other end, right? For a reaction in N2 plus O2 gives me NO, right? So setting up our equilibrium constant, NO2, over our reactants, N2 and O2. We put in our concentrations for this particular reaction, and what we see is, right, that we're going to get a small number for our K. So if we get a small number for our K, this is letting me know that our reaction is mainly, mainly going to be producing our reactants. And this is what we're going to see with the equilibrium, right? There's certain reactions that are just hard to produce our products. So it actually likes to mainly stay in the reactants. And this is an example of one, all right? But we can use the equilibrium constant to determine these things now, all right? So if I know, if I do my equilibrium constant, I put in my concentrations, right? I don't know the reaction. I don't know what type, right? But if I find my K, and if it's a small number, well, that's going to let me know, okay, my reaction is mainly going to go towards my reactants. If I do it again for another reaction, as I did over here, if I know that it's going to be a big K, well, that means that, okay, we're going mainly towards products. So this is how equilibrium can be very helpful, right, going forward.